Welcome to this week's episode of the Punk Popcast, where we're going to be talking about Good Acoustics, Volume 2. Welcome to this week's episode of the Punk Popcast. I am Brad, and with me, as always, I have our guy, Jason. Welcome, Jason. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic, and... Clearly, anyone watching us on YouTube can know that we're very excited. Baseball's back. <laughs> so excited. So excited, especially somebody who lives down the street from spring training facilities. I am absolutely ecstatic. My uh, my plans for February are pretty much shot. So got to try to get as much in as I can in a week. <laughs> I'm sure you can. Two weeks. <laughs> we'll see I have how faith it goes. in you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad somebody does it's, uh, at this point. But anyway, uh, this week we're going to be uh, diving back into some of our favorite acoustic songs. Uh, we're calling this episode Good Acoustics Volume 2, um, because why the heck not? So we're going to get into it. Um, Jason, I believe I let us off last time. Oh, so it's okay. your turn to go first, if I am recalling correctly. All right, let's peel the Band-Aid off right away. It's a band we have not talked about yet, and we probably right. should. Let's talk about Dashboard Confessional and the sharp hint of New Tears. Um, so I I love Dashboard Confessional. I know it's not the coolest thing to admit, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do. I love them, um, especially like those first like four or five albums and and all the EPs that came with it. It's just good. Good soul music, man. Not soul mm-hmm. music, like soul music. It's good for the soul. For the soul, yeah. yes. It's like chicken soup, if you will. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, I mean, this song was on a mix given to me by my then ex girlfriend uh, because she knew the kind of music I was digging at the time. Um, and this was on on that mix and. I can definitely think of times listening to it in the car on the way home post breakup. Not that girl, different girls. <laughs> um, different girl. <laughs> but I mean, it definitely bring, puts me in a certain time and place. Um, and I got to say, I mean, one of the things about Dashboard Confessional, it's so amazing is that these songs hold up really well. Mm-hmm. They do. And it's funny because uh, you're right. It, there was a period of time where it wasn't cool to like dashboard, right? And I don't know. I don't know what it was. If it's just one of those things where they got where he got so big, like for a while, you know, like was so popular, and then all of a sudden everybody was like, "Ew, gross!" Not anymore. He's too popular, right? Um, but like now, as we've gotten older, everything does age really well. And I have to say that if like dashboard had a direct influence on some of my songwriting when I was in a band. Like, absolutely, because I was listening to it so much. I learned some of the chords that he used, and I was like, outstanding, and we used it, right? But the chorus to this song, to me, is like, I mean, we say it all the time. It's quintessential Dashboard Confessional, right? (laughs) I mean, the band got its name based on this song. Oh, really? I didn't realize that. On the way home, this car hears my confessions. There you go. The song is a Dashboard Confessional. (laughs) Yeah, then I hadn't thought about it, but the chorus to me expect me to apologize for things that that you've done wrong, but you're inciting others. You're owning up to nothing, and I wish that I was gone because you're not going anywhere. Uh, that I mean, that's I mean that that's an emo chorus if ever I've heard one. And you say that that it brings up like a like feelings of a certain time. I'm like, it's fair to just say like you could just you don't have to say at a certain time. Dashboard confessional brings up feelings. <laughs> <laughs> They're if emo was in the dictionary, it'd be IE dashboard confessional. It'd be a picture of Chris Caraba. Um, yes, exactly. What I love about the chorus, because a lot of a lot of punk pop punk bands and emo bands and whatever falls under our genre we talk about, a lot of bands write simplistic li- lyrics or maybe lyrics that are too blunt. And he took he took the phrase, but you're inciting others. Like mm-hmm. you can listen to the song and you know exactly what he's talking about without him spelling it out for you just by using a a 
a more obscure phrasing or wording yeah. than maybe another band. Well, wasn't he? Wasn't he an elementary school principal or something like that when he was writing these first couple of albums? I have no clue. I mean, he was in a, a hardcore band before Dashboard Confessional. Yeah, I, I think at one point he was. I heard that he was a, a principal. I'm looking it up now just to just to make sure. But because um, he was in, he taught at an elementary school. Maybe and that's he was what it in was. Further seems forever at the same time. Okay, that that might be what it was that he was teaching at the elementary school. It wasn't necessarily the principal, but anyway, no, that was something that I had heard a long time ago, and I was like, man, that's crazy. Could you imagine going into <laughs> going into the principal? Some kid gets sent to the principal office. Principal's office. He's like, trust me, I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> More than you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> anyway, no, and and I have to say my last, my one last thing with dashboard, and I think that I, I couldn't take I couldn't take him seriously for a long time because there was a kid I knew in high school. He's like, he's like, I want to start a punk pop or a pop punk parody band and call it Bathroom Stall Confessional. Oh Jesus. And <laughs> oh, like what? He's like, yeah. He's like, dashboard's the hottest thing going right now. I'm going to start a parody band. It, it gonna, I'm going to be like the Weird Al of pop punk, and I'm going to call myself Bathroom Stall Confessional. I was like, that's freaking brilliant, man. I love it. I love everything about it. <laughs> Real quick before we wrap this up, if no one's, if anyone listening hasn't listened to the MTV Unplugged album, you are missing out. Because I would say they might be the definitive versions of of those early songs, including this one. Uh, those are probably the ones that I had on uh, on my mix CD. Because I mean, those Honestly. every kid in that building is singing along with it, and it's even listening to it, it sounds magical. And that's yeah. not a word I throw around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. All right, um, my next, or I guess my first song today, uh, let's let's go with something that, I'm going to go a little bit off the beaten path here with something acoustic. Um, let's go with some census fail here. Now, I don't necessarily think of acoustic when I hear census, when I think census fail, right? I, I mean, I don't feel like I'm alone in that, um, just because I don't, I listen to a lot of census fail, and I don't know of a lot. That they've done acoustic am i just missing out do you know jason or what i'm not the biggest census fail guy so you shouldn't be asking uh, me well, this question okay. all right well <laughs> i like them i've liked them like so i saw them live in 2003 the drive through invasion tour and all my friends i was with were kind of like ew i was like dude that's awesome they were they were awesome live like they were but so good live they're a good band um, what I think is funny is you're the West Coast guy who likes East Coast post hardcore and hardcore. Yeah. And I'm the yeah. East Coast guy and I like the West Coast hardcore. So, yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely 100% right. Um, I, I have to say that one of my absolute favorite bands as a West Coast band, though, is Homegrown. And we'll get to them eventually. But, uh, but yeah, no, I do like the East Coast post hardcore for some reason. I don't know why, but I, I am a big to fan. You. I guess so. I guess I guess it does, but uh, so this song is I haven't got to the song title yet, Jason. This is "Rum is for Drinking, Not for Burning." This and this is this is my favorite Census Fail song. First off, like the actual version, like the original version of this song on the album is outstanding. Is one of the thing is one of the songs that first turned me on to them. Uh, but then I heard the acoustic version of this, and it's I don't know if it's even better, but it's really really good. Um. And one of the reasons I love this song so much is because I am obsessed with pirates. Uh, you'll hear about if you listen to me on baseball together, you'll hear about it all the time. Like from wearing a pirate baseball hat to referencing pirates on re every episode, pretty much. Um, but this song is super, super cool. The story that it tells about piracy. And I have loved every bit of it from the first time I heard it. Um, the chorus Stay with me into the setting sun. The battle has been won, but war has just begun. And as we grow, emotions start to die. We need to find a way just to keep our desire alive. Um, now, piracy aside, 
using that metaphor for uh i don't know just like life in general i was gonna right? say life <laughs> just yeah and i think that's one of the things that's always drawn me into pirates you know besides like the whole um i mean i grew up sailing and boating so like that part has always attracted me but also just like they're doing everything they can to get through life and sometimes it's not pretty actually 99 percent of the time it's not pretty but they're getting through as best they can until they're not anymore right i feel like right. that's kind of what's going on right i don't know i might be getting too much into it there no i mean no i and i i mean i was right there with you when you when you're trying to find the word you wanted to use I mean, you're right. That chorus doesn't have to just apply to to being a pirate. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it it can apply to life because at the end of the day, I mean, it, you, the word battle could, could be misconstrued, but I mean, it is a battle. You you have to pay your bills. You have to work. You have to take care of your family. Every day is something that you are, mm. are fighting for, fighting to keep together. Um, so I understand what you're saying. Uh, also, cheap plug. Uh, if you want a pirate baseball hat, go to nineplusus.com. <laughs> yeah, I got your back. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do the shameless plug, but thank you. I, I got appreciate it for it. you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, but no, like overall though, like aside from the chorus, the the picture, like the story that this song tells, is is really cool. Like I, I've always loved the second verse. Now set the sails to quarter to quarter mast. Would jump the ship. We'll sink them fast. Like, yeah, that's awesome. Like, and I feel like the, I think this song came out about the same time as the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. And I think it that's is inspired. The, yeah, definitely. <laughs> the name itself, right? Rum is for drinking, not for burning. Because I think Jack Sparrow either says that exact line or something like it. And you know, obviously, one of my favorite movies for clear reasons why um but the picture that this paints the story that it tells is really a whole lot of fun and it's a really cool it's a it's a fun listen um i i like the second verse uh as well uh but i like we'll jump the ship we'll sink them fast follow men follow me to victory there's like a, a an undertone of of to me there's an undertone of friendship of com camaraderie there and mm -hmm. I'm a I love that kind of thing in a song. Um, yeah. So that was something that I, you know, listening to identified with. So I enjoyed that. And it was I thought it was a really cool line in the song. So last thing along those lines, one of my favorite video <laughs> games. I mean, I'm getting like off the rails here. I'm sorry. But <laughs> one of my favorite video games is Assassin's Creed Black Flag. And that's because it's pirate themed. It's my favorite franchise with my favorite theme put together into one. How's that on a match made in heaven? Anyway. At one point, they're getting ready to attack a fort, and one of the guys, one of like the the guys, he was a captain of another ship. He's come over with them. He's like, they're not going to go for it. And Edward Kenway, the character, the main character, he gets up on the side of the ship, and he's like, "There's loot. There's all kinds of stuff. There's power. We can take this place, and it'll be ours for the. T or it'll be ours to have." And he's like, "What do you say, man?" And everybody's just like, "Yeah, you know." He gets out the whole tr all the troops rallied to go, and he gets down and he looks at it, at the one of the other guys. He goes try to get that kind of agreement out of parliament walks off. I was like, Oh, yes. <laughs> that's <laughs> good. Awesome. That's good. <laughs> it was so good. But that's along the lines of what you're saying there, the camaraderie, they bring everybody together that they have one purpose in mind. And I think it's awesome. Yeah, that's great. So I like that. All right, go ahead, Jason. What do you have for us? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, my second song. <laughs> <laughs> it's the kind of night we're having today or tonight. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with JC Ray by all time low. Okay. Uh, so apparently this song's based on real life events, which very Makes interesting, sense. uh, might've been a girl he got together with named JC Ray after a gig and then never contacted her again. <laughs> <laughs> Living very much the rock star life. Um, but I, I really dig this song acoustically. I, I mean, it, it's an okay song as is but i think acoustically it adds more emotion to the song it strips away all the production and just creates a really good a uh, good tune um i 
love the outro. I never told a lie. That makes me a liar. I've never made a bet, but we gamble with desire. I never lit a match with intent to start a fire, but recently the flames are getting out of control. I like that. I think it's really great little like bridge kind of area. Um, there's just the first time I heard this song acoustic, I just it hit me hard. I thought it was fantastic. So um, there's one there's a certain combination that I love and it's guitars and piano. Um, I am a huge fan of Jack's mannequin for that reason. And we've hit, I touched on something corporate about the piano. Like when I got into this genre, like in high school, I was like, man, I really should have taken those piano lessons a whole lot, ser- like more serious because <laughs> I could be doing, you know, and like I learned one John Tesh song when I was like 17, 16 or 17, just so I could impress girls. Like that was legitimately the only reason. Hold, hold like, on. What? Please tell me it was round ball rock. By John Tesh? No, no. Oh, no. It was. If you had done the NBA on NBC theme, I'd have been blown away. I should have. I should have. I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> but I, I really should have. No, it was. It was something else. It was completely different. <laughs> but you know, we're talking about getting a piano. That might be next. There Let's you go. Real. There we go. That's the one. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. You're welcome. But no, uh, gonna kill but me. no. Uh, but no, the uh, the intro to this song though like hooked me immediately. I heard it and I was like, "Yeah, I dig it. I dig it right on." Um, but no, that outro is awesome. That's a cool line. Uh, but that was really the thing that stuck me with that was that intro when the piano comes in. I was immediately sold. So uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to go through a few more of our favorite acoustic songs. Nine Plus Us presents the Baseball Together podcast with your hosts, Blackjack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes. Weekly episodes for the entire baseball family where we talk all baseball all the time. Available on all your favorite podcast apps and on YouTube. Come join our baseball family where we do baseball together. The Not Another Sports Podcast is the home of sports talk for everyone. Every other week, you can catch David and Jason as they talk about all things sports. From current events to classic moments and everything in between, you can find the Not Another Sports Podcast on Anchor.fm, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, and more. Please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Welcome back. We are talking about some more of our favorite acoustic songs. We're calling this Volume 2, Good Acoustics. Uh, So we left off with Jason uh, with some all-time low. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to save my heavy hitter for last, Jason. I'm going to go into, we're going to talk about some Rise Against right now. Um, So this is Rise Against, Swing Life Away. This is an outstanding song. The first time I ever heard it was on Punk Goes Acoustic, Um, the, the quintessential acoustic punk album um but i gotta tell you jason the album version is way better and it's because it's about 30 to 40 seconds longer and there's a little guitar solo in there that adds so much more to this song that it's absolutely amazing it it is a game changer for this song that i i cannot listen to the version on punk goes pop anymore because it's missing that guitar solo and it's it's pretty simple it's only maybe I don't even think it's the entire 30 to 40 seconds. Like it might be 10 to 15 seconds is all, but it adds so much more to it. It's so much better that I, I love every second of it, every, every stinking note. Um, but this song is actually a really good little grow old with you type song, right? It's that, a love song. Um, yeah, it is. It is. And it, but to me, it's more, more than just like, a love song it's i mean it's you're telling a girl you want to grow old with her right because uh we we live on front porch swings and swing life away we get by just fine here on minimum wage if love is a labor i'll slave till the end i won't cross these streets until you hold my hand like that's that's a that's not just like the typical fallout boy one one night stand song right this <laughs> is this is you want somebody to be in with you for the long haul 
Right. That's what you want here is that this is like, no, like I am legitimately in love with you. I want to grow old with you. I want to waste away my last days being broke, but it's okay because I'm with you on the front porch swing. Right. You, you know? may not have much, but you have love. Exactly. Hmm. What I, what I like about this song and it's, it's one of the things I like about rise against and, and, this term kind of has a negative connotation because of well, comedy me and you both like, but they're very much a blue collar kind of band. They talk mm -hmm. to their songs are very middle class. Yeah. If that makes sense. It does make sense because I feel like them and there's a few other bands. Like I feel like black flag is kind of along those lines, but mostly rise against. And it's, you know, because of what they're, I mean, their name alone says it basically like what rise what it's kind of like a rage against the machine thing is what I've always felt like with Red. I've always felt that, too, actually. That's funny you, you know? say that because I've had that feeling. So. Um, and we talked about this person on a previous episode. Did you know that Machine Gun Kelly covered this? He did. He did. I need to find that. I have not listened to it, but he he's covered it. I, I had no idea. <clears throat> That's fantastic. I need to find that. <laughs> I thought you'd be interested. Um, <laughs> Very. <laughs> um, I really like this song for the same reasons you do. I mean, I don't know if I can elaborate on it any more than you have. It's just, it's, it's dare I say a perfect song. I would say, I would say it's a perfect song as well. Between every, from everything from the lyrics to the melody that, it, that he sings to the guitar itself everything about this song is absolutely perfect like it is so well put together that the only way they could improve on the version on punk goes pop was by going to the album version with the added guitar solo <laughs> and my, my thought on this and, it, and it's not a knock on their guitar player um but playing an acoustic solo is much harder than playing an electric solo and it's something that um, I remember hearing Bruce Kulick talk about, uh, on the documentary for the kiss on plug back in 95, that it's, it's difficult to get those solos to sound even remotely similar on acoustic than it is electric. So that might be why it's missing from, well, it's, it's, an, it, it's an acoustic solo. Oh, is it really? Oh, yeah. I don't know anything yeah. then. Yeah, it's just, it, <laughs> it's just, uh, <laughs> It's just an acoustic break because the album version is, is acoustic. That's what I'm saying. It's the exact same song. They oh. just take that guitar break out. Well, thanks for letting me pontificate on nothing. I appreciate it. Hey, that. you're not wrong, though, because when I was <laughs> learning how to play guitar, I didn't even teach myself how to solo because I was like, I have an acoustic guitar. It's not going to sound good. So you're not wrong. Um, but yeah, no. So anyway. I'm drowning here now. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go ahead with your next song there, Jason? <laughs> All right. My last song is a band we've talked about before. Uh, I'm going with Memory by Sugar Cult. And this is also off of Pop or uh, Punko's Acoustic Volume One. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually think this is the better version of the song, uh, much like with JC Ray. I think yeah. while the uh, electric version is poppy and, and a fun listen, I think that almost overshadows the emotion of the song. Whereas I think the acoustic version is just killer. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. The, the lyrics fit more with the acoustic version because I heard the acoustic version of the song first before I heard the original, the original album version. Um, and I was a little thrown off by the album version with the electric guitar compared to how it sounded with the acoustic. And uh, this is a song that still pops into my head once a week it has for when did i first hear this um all, probably 18 years ago is the first time i heard this song and it still pops into my head like i said about once a week great chorus so, and that's that's a sugar chorus. cult that's a sugar cult um oh god i can't think of it now one of their their mo's is a great chorus great choruses catchy choruses sing song chorus yeah yes yeah, because this is, this is a great song to sing along to as well. It's fantastic. Definitely Nothing... makes me think of a relationship too, so. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get into it though. No, um, I'm not either. <laughs> uh, 
on that note, let's go to my last song if you're ready. I'm ready. Okay, very good. Um, so this is one of my favorite bands. This is Yellow Card. And this is a song that Jason's really been pushing me to pick because it's so good. It's Fire I won't pick it because it's his band. <laughs> But no, this is Firewater by Yellow Card, another song off of Punk Goes Acoustic. And it's funny because they have, so Yellow Card has a bunch of albums, like like their regular albums. You know, like they have um, One for the Kids, Ocean Avenue, paper, or, um, Lights and Sounds, Paper Walls, whatever. But they have so many other little songs that are off the beaten path. Like there's this one, um, there's violins that you can't get like freaking anywhere and then there's their whole underdog ep that is impossible to find now that you're just like man if you want to get more yellow card aside from their standard releases like there's so much more out there and this is one of them and this is one of the best ones like so good so i said i think i said on our last acoustic episode that i felt like silverstein does uh does acoustic better than just about anybody Yellow card is up there with the just about anybody because man, I, I guess I should say they're not in the just about anybody. They're up there with them on the same plane as Silverstein because yellow card does acoustic so well that they write, they wrote lights and sounds acoustic and then translated it over. They did a complete re-release of ocean Avenue acoustic. And then they did a whole acoustic release of when you're through thinking, say yes. But Firewater, above all that, is like above all of that as their best work. And it's it's in it's unreal. It's absolutely insane. Um it it has the, the typical yellow card feel to it, right? But there's just something about it. I can't put my finger exactly on what it is, but there's something about it that takes it the next step up. I mean, this is my favorite. Uh, yellow card song i good love reason. this song so much um <clears throat> and i just didn't want to take picking this away from you <laughs> <laughs> i really didn't that's why i'm like are you gonna pick it <laughs> my feelings would not have been hurt jason <laughs> um this song this song is clearly about being in a band and and walking away from someone who you who you love or you care about but it's so relatable you don't have to be in a band to relate to this song and i think that's one of the biggest positives about this song in general um <clears throat> because you like can, the yellow card have in that general. feeling yeah mm. but man yeah. every um, verse the chorus is just fantastic mm -hmm. the drive in the music and and I, one thing i've always really liked about yellow card is the way that ryan key and sean mackin's voices just blend together so perfectly and this is one of those songs where they do it. Um, like there's a song off of uh, Ocean Avenue. It's 23 where Sean Mackin actually leads in and it sounds more like homegrown than yellow card. But you get into this song into Firewater and the way that their voices blend together, it's absolutely flawless and seamless. It's like one voice. Almost. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> and there are times when Sean Mackin's voice sounds just like Ryan Key's, but there's just different enough that you can tell that he's in there harmonizing and it's, it's unreal. It's so good. Yeah, but. it's it's fantastic. I mean, I, I, you had some picks I can't elaborate on because you've said it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a, I've been in love with this song forever. Um, it's funny though. So I wonder if so. You talked about somebody from the band leaving. Um, so if you look on Genius here, Jason, the album cover uh, for Ocean Avenue that they show has all the band members in it, right? You're looking at that. Yep. If you go all the way over to the left, the dude with the black hair, he yes. plays bass on the album, but he's not in any of the album artwork. Oh, okay. <laughs> that it's the other four. There is no, there is no bass player in any of the album artwork hmm. on like the inside jacket, anything. And so I have a feeling that he, cause there's obviously there's a bass part across the album. And I wonder if there was something that happened right before or between recording and the release that he left and it was not. And sadly, that Pardon. happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Because Yellow Card goes through gone through band members like, oh, like crazy. Eventually, uh, there were no original 
band members left except for Sean Mack and the violin player before they broke up. So True. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let <laughs> us know some of your favorite acoustic songs. Reach out to us on Twitter at Punk Popcast. You can reach out to me at Jojo Cornrow, J O J O C O R N R O W. And Jason is at X Jason Dag X. Very good. Excellent. Go ahead and reach out to us. Let us know what you think about some of your favorite acoustic songs. Let us know what you think about some of our favorite acoustic songs. And uh, thanks for joining us. We'll get back with you next week. Thank you.